Welcome to the Grappling We See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. This week on the show, we are going to talk about Quintet Pro 2, Fight to Win 81 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We are also going to talk about the Spider Korea Finals and Quarterfinals. Okay, the Spider Korea Quarterfinals in Korea, the Brother Eight Man Jiu Jitsu tournament that happened uh, in somewhere <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> We are also going to talk about the upcoming events, the World Series of Grappling, Abu Dhabi Grand Slam in Tokyo, and Fight to Win in... In Baltimore! That will be Fight to Win 82, and Josh is on that card. That's correct. We are also going to cover the end of the Natsuba show for Sumo. In other news, I'm Maine, as always, here with my co-host... Josh. But before we get into all of that, a little bit of news. Josh, how's your week been? It's been pretty good. That's awesome. How's your weight? It's on point. It, I'm there. I'm ready. You know, I ate a steak yesterday. I'm, it was I'm going to pause the recording right now. I'm going to whip out my scale, and we're going to check this shit. All right, Josh just, uh, just got off the scale. He is not on weight. He is 190.1. Let's be real. I get a one-pound allowance to begin with. Do you? Yeah. They really? give you a one-pound allowance. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, huh. it's like MMA. They give you a one-pound allowance. So even if I was 191, I'd be fine. All right, so technically you're underweight, Josh. I got to bulk you up 0.9 pounds. I, I'm i going to poop and probably be 189. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> you got a week to fuck this up, man. <laughs> so in other news, this week uh, we were lucky enough, I was lucky enough to go up to Philly to cover Fight to Win. Pro- Fight to Win. They've had a rebranding. So they are no longer Fight to Win Pro. They are just Fight to Win. Fight to Win 81 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am going to mess this up so many times. He's going to say Fight to Win Pro. Every, Every time. time. I'm so, it, it's ingrained in my skull, Josh. We've covered them since Fight to Win Pro 53. And we've, I've watched them for even longer than that. Been calling out Fight to Win Pro, Fight to Win Pro, Fight to Win Pro. Now it's just Fight to Win. It's going to, I cannot explain and express the amount that that is going to mess me up every time I have to announce Fight to Win Pro. Fight to Win. Jesus. It has begun. It's begun. So uh, in other news this week, Kasai Pro 3 has announced some additional names. Their undercards announced a lot of DDS guys, a lot of, uh, a lot of fun matches on the undercard, actually. And as well as for news for Kasai Pro, Gio Martinez is out because he hurt himself. At Quintet, supposedly. Yep, and uh, I can probably point to the exact moment he hurt himself. That footlock? I was saying with Satoshi. Oh, yanking on yeah, his arm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're, we're going to get into Quintet 2 a little bit later and talk about Gio's matches and probably point out exactly where I think he got injured. But he is now out of his match at Kasai Pro 3. Uh, him and AJ are going to have a match there that's now canceled due to the injury. So that sucks because that would have been how a... how bad the injury is. The match is like three and a half weeks away. Dude... I don't know, but he had to he had to go against some big guys, and they went hard at that event. It would not surprise me if he was injured before that, and then he aggravated or did something additional because we saw him get hurt at EBI before too. Like he's not a guy that's immune to injuries. So I was excited to see the match between him and AJ. It's not going to happen now. Hopefully they'll get someone else to fill in against AJ. Um, there's a poll up on Flow Grappling right now that who do they want to replace against AJ. No one. No I, one. I, I, I don't care. So, <laughs> that's pretty much the only thing in news aside from one other item. Zach Stewart, a uh, uh, competitor out of Precision Jiu-Jitsu, passed away a little bit before this card. Uh, Wednesday, was it? It was, it, it was recently. Uh, it's always a bummer to lose somebody in Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, they started to go fund me pretty much immediately for his children. He has a two-year-old and a two-month-old. Uh, I don't know all of the circumstances surrounding it. He just passed away while he was at his gym. So, you know, a lot of the people at Fight to Win were there in support of Zach. Uh, Mike Padilla filled in for Pete Shoemaker, who was a close friend, obviously. And he even wore a Precision BJJ shirt. So if you can throw a couple of dollars to it, it helps out his kids, you know, both young, two and two months old. It's a real bummer. Uh, GoFundMe and then just search for Zach Stewart. 
So on to the recap of Quintet Pro 2. So a little weird thing happens is we do the show on Sunday night. It is released on Tuesday. Tuesday. So Quintet happened last week on Monday. So between the recording of the show and us putting out the show, the event happened. So that's why we're recovering it this show and not last show. Josh, I called it. It was a great event. Yep. As per usual. Yeah. And you're giving me nothing there today. No, I'm not giving you anything because uh, it was good. It was it was good, but it was uh, it felt kind of flat at certain points, and I was like, eh. It was exciting to watch. Don't get me wrong, but it I I felt it fell kind of flat, and these these teams are kind of some of them are weirdly thrown together. I would definitely give you that. So let's get into it. First matchup, Team Tiger Muay Thai versus Team Reebok. Which was Sakuraba's team. And again, it was Sakuraba's team, Team Sakuraba, until like the week before the event. And all of a sudden, it was Team Reebok. And they were one of the few teams that didn't have like all matching attire for their grapplers. It was, it was a little odd. Not going to lie. Yeah. So that started off with Christoph Vanjik versus Dong Sik Yoon. Draw. Tarek Suleiman versus Hideo Tokoro. Draw. So if you don't understand Quintet, it is a 5v5 team battle. Kachinuki. There's the Japanese term for it. And the first member of your team goes against the first member of the other team. If you draw, both teammates are eliminated. You move to the next two people in the lineup. If one person submits the other person in regulation or injury or whatever happens, then that person that submitted the person continues on to the next person in the other team's lineup, and you go down until all members on one team are eliminated. And once that happens, it's uh, it's four teams. So the f- team one from the A bracket goes against the winner of team B from the B bracket. Yeah. So moving on, Viking Wong versus Hassam Rita. Rita showed up. He's still a brown belt. I had not seen him before. I have because I've been following Carpe Diem's Instagram and stuff. I've seen him. I've not seen him compete before. Again, I have because of of that. All right, Josh, knee deep in jujitsu here. Yeah. Rita was, he was all over the rest of the team. He dude, he won his first match by toehold in like thirty seconds. Yeah, just reached up, grabbed it, and bop, got that, got a super quick tap, and you were like, "Holy shit!" And he carried that team like it pretty much was his team and everybody else. It was him and some other guys. Kind of, honestly, I don't want to be disparaging, but dude, dude showed up. Yeah. So then it was Alex Shield versus uh, Rita. Rita goes by knee bar this time. And again, about 30 seconds. Very, you know, goes by quick. Team captain Stuart Cooper versus Rita. Rita just did not care. He just would go after it. He eventually ended up on Cooper's back and just choked him. I mean, he he was the standout to the entire card. Like, if you picked up really anything, it was... Keep an eye out for this dude. Yeah, and what's funny is if you if you go to BJJ Heroes and it gives you a breakdown of it, he was the only team member below 40 years old. Jeez, I did not realize that. The only one. He's a younger guy, too. I think he's in his 20s. I think he's, yeah, I think he's early 20s. Yeah. But he was also, I think, the biggest guy on that team as well. By or he, he Well, was, yeah, because he's nine feet tall. At least, Josh. He every time they'd walk out, it was him versus someone else. You look at like the stare down between the two right before the start of the match, and you're like, "Holy shit! How tall is Rita? He's yeah. super tall. So you got he's got the best BJJ body. Super tall, super lanky, good in scrambles. Like goddamn. So Team uh, Reebok move on to take their bracket and go against the winners of the next bracket. That next bracket would be Team Vagabond. Versus Team 10th Planet. Does Vagabond mean something different in Japanese? Is the translation something different? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, it is just a roaming band of jujitsu guys. I mean, that they they are, but it's just a weird thing to name your team. Team Vagabond. Like, I don't know Vagabond as a, as a positive thing. Whatever. In at least the, American, the English translation of that word. Whatever. 
Anyway, PJ Barch versus... Uh, did I just jump ahead? Nope, you didn't. I just can't pronounce the guy's name, so I was leaving it to you. Oh, I did. I was looking uh, forward, and I was like, wait, no, Daisuke Nakamura is not on, on Team Tense Planet. Uh, PJ Barch versus Krizik Shrabsky. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Draw. Although Barch was Barch was really on it. They were both... Uh, they were both moving. It was, it if, was, was if this is a decision, Barch takes it pretty handily. Yes. He was pretty controlling most of the match. Uh initially he gets out to kind of a slow start, but as soon as he gets on top the first time, it's it's pretty much all she wrote. Yeah. This is this match I was impressed. Richie Martinez versus Zhao Assis ended in a draw. Richie Martinez showed up. Mm-hmm. Like his his Rubber guard work, which he's known for, even like getting his half his legs shoved into half guard almost. He he was still working, kept him Dude. away, was attacking with that omoplata consistently. Like and it was it was actually threatening too. It right. wasn't just like a bullshit like oh throwing it up in nogi. It was like oh he's like Jarrah has to address this or he will get finished by it. Yeah, I mean it was impressive. It it, it was a much Better showing for him than EBI was by, than the by EBI far. match. I think yeah. that's the la- most recent time we've seen him. I think we saw him, but right before that, either on EBI again or something else. But this is the best performance we've seen. This better a better performance than we saw him at Nogi Worlds. Like he looked really good. He looked really good. And you're holding off Zhao Assis. Impressive, very mm-hmm. impressive, dude. It makes my every but every time he goes to rubber guard and his knee bends that way, dude. I don't know how he does it. Ooh, because it, it pop, it like doesn't pop out, but it, you see the angle being made, it's like just... not being where the knee is supposed to be. And one day that's gonna go. Maybe, maybe. this year, maybe, maybe five years from now. That that flexibility doesn't last forever in that knee because he pulls it forward on the calf and on the shin. But it was rough. But yeah, this is the, again the best performance I've ever seen out of Richard Martinez. Impressive. And the dude showed up and showed he can compete at that you know high level. I didn't. Zhao Assis is definitely bigger than him weight wise. Oh yeah, and you know, hats and like, off to hats off to Richie on that one. And Zhao Assis isn't he a world champion? Or yes. in, at color belts, or he, yes, I believe so. He is so. one of the most credentialed people Richie's ever been against, and this is one of the best performances I've ever seen him against. So you know, props. That was it. Was a fun match. It does end in a draw. But, but still, again, if you're if you're picking who wins the match based on what they were doing, Richie would have won. Yeah, I would agree with that. Gio Martinez versus Satoshi Ishii. They called him Ishii on the broadcast. Yeah, but when he was announced, you hear Ishii. Okay. Like when the Japanese guy announcing them says their name, he goes, Ishii Satoshi. All right, that's I'll give, why, that's I'll give why it the two then. eyes are there. I'll give it to you then. Anyway, I think this is the biggest uh, size mismatch that was present on the card. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because Martinez is—I don't know what they build him at, but he walks around and can't be more than one sixty. No, I th- it might have been Sacknoff versus the the last guy. Oh, okay, or the second to last guy. One of those two guys was really tiny, but this one was a close one, and you know, Satoshi just tried to take that to his advantage mind you now this is only a four minute match because if they have more than a 20 kilo weight difference quintet brings the match length from eight minutes to four minutes which josh and i aren't big fans of i'm not a huge fan of it i mean it worked in in geo's favor I d- yeah I, d- I think this match goes an additional four minutes that yeah geo is done that ishii eventually just takes the arm off yeah uh again props to geo like we've i've talked some shit about geo in the past for various reasons but this I was wouldn't a, say shit. You, you, wouldn't, you didn't talk shit I, I, about okay. him. He, I th- I've talked about him not having as impressive performances as they've hyped him up to have in the past. This performance from him, even, even on the draw, was outstanding. He's a tough motherfucker. Yeah. Like, at one point, Satoshi, who is, um, I think, built by the Japanese gods to destroy limbs, if I'm correct. I think that's what they build him as. Grabs Gio's arm in, like, a deep, locked-in Kimura and lifts him up mm, probably eight inches off the ground, separates the hands and shoves it behind his back and Gio manages to get his back shoulder up enough to change the angle to not have Ishii just break his arm in half. Yeah. It was it was, it was quite impressive. Uh, moving on. Amir 
Alam. You're correct, Josh. Amir Alam. Not Alan, like I've been calling him for weeks now. Versus Andre Kazuziznak. That's not even close. Kazu Sionek. Kazi. Uh, he, Andre won by knee bar from a scissor takedown. That was a relatively fast match. I wouldn't really call that a scissor takedown either. I really wouldn't either, but whatever. Uh, Amir looked like he had hurt his leg because he was down on the mat for a little bit. And they talked about it uh, after, well, just not to spoil anything, after the Team Planet, ten, Team 10th Planet uh, wins this side of the bracket, they talked about him potentially not being able to come back out. Yeah. And they talked about that line. The commentary was seemed like they were going to have four guys go out against the five people from Team Reebok, and they talked about it, talked about it, and then... He came out. He came out, so... But this was a really fast submission. He, like, it's a, it's a basically an old-school Sambo. He rolls through, like, a Gracie Combatives to the knee, flips him over, and just gets a straight knee bar. You see it not infrequently in Sambo, but you do not see it frequently at all in Jiu-Jitsu. It's something I've... I cannot recall the last time I've seen this type of knee bar done in a Jiu-Jitsu match, but it's not uncommon in Sambo. So it was kind of cool to see and showcase that, oh, shit, Sambo has some legit techniques that are... Like that work really well. Cool knee bar, fast knee bar, and Alan, uh, Alan, <laughs> apologize, uh, scream taps. Goes, ah, and then, you know, taps. taken off the map. So, Adam Sacknoff versus Andre. Sacknoff has to win. Yeah. Has to, or they're the done. He's the fifth guy in the Team 10th Planet lineup, and Team uh, Vagabond has two more people. Sacknoff, so, if he draws. Sacknoff anchored it. And I'm going to talk about something in just a second, but he big manned him and he got on his back and he choked him. So that was awesome. I was impressed at Sacknoff's back control here. Yeah. Like I, Sacknoff slimmed down a bit. And I think in the past like six months or the last year, he's really slimmed down a bunch and lost kind of that gut he used to have. And like, he looks a lot better. His scrambles looks better. Like his control looks better. He looks like he's made big changes in his game in the last year, and that was evident here when he gets on the back. Looks impressive. So he moves on. The last person versus the last person. Adam Sacknoff versus Kikal Dope Dobsti. I mean, sometimes I, I don't try. Uh, that went to a draw. So then it goes to a decision. Well, it goes to a decision or it goes to what team has the most warnings. And if each team's warnings are, sorry, it goes to the match well, that's warnings. that's if everything is completely even. Yes. That's if everybody like went to a draw. But, well, no, this works out too because mm-hmm. each team had a submission. So then it goes down to that. And I think the uh, Vagabond team did have warnings more warnings then i think it was i think it was equal and the way that basically they decided is ref decision at the end here because oh, everything okay, was okay, they okay, were, okay, equal okay. warnings equal warning for the match that's right equal, that's right. everything was equal it goes down to ref decision and they chose um 10th planet they chose 10th planet which uh i think i don't disagree i don't that. disagree either i think overall they had a better showing against the the matches that they did have and you know it, but it was close but they gave it to 10th planet so moving on to the finals Team 10th Planet versus Team Reebok. PJ Barch versus Daisuke Nakamura. Draw. I'm... Uh, eh. You know. It was a fun match. It wasn't a, wasn't a bad match. I don't it think any of these were bad matches. They weren't bad. It just wasn't, like, as exciting. You know? Josh, you want fan favorites your matches. Yeah. Uh, Richie Martinez versus... Oh, this is one I wanted to talk about, by the way. They kept their order exactly the same. Yep. I they thought did, it was weird. They did not move anything around. We're talking about 10th Planet. 10th so Planet. So typically what happens is in the second bracket, um, you teams will go for their first Their first lineup is one thing, and their second lineup is a completely different order of fighters for the second outing. 10th Planet didn't do that. They kept their lineup exactly the same. Barch, Martinez, Mar- um, Geo, Allen, Sacknoff. Again. Alum. Alum. Fuck it, man. Every time. The exact same. This is the first team that we've seen do that. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, I wonder what they're doing. Anyway. Oh, Richie- oh quick. Before you get into this. Okay. We've given shit for, to Polaris before about that overhead camera. Fucking hate that. I love it. I like it personally. Everyone else hates it. I love it. I hate it. Quintet did a really, it wasn't a direct overview camera, but it was like a aerial camera. And they used it a couple times in this event. 
beautifully to sh- to better showcase the submission. And the time they showcased they did, used the best was versus Alum when he got knee barred. They used that overhead shot so you could see where the legs were triangled for him getting the, his knee extended. Great use of that camera. The the overhead camera can be used, and Quintet used it well. I just wanted to say that one thing. Okay. Also, the commentary was good. Richie Martinez versus Kazushi Sakuraba. If anybody thought that Sakuraba was going to win, they were crazy. Especially after he goes through Joao Assis. So it was what was amusing about this match is Richie Martinez gets caught in a calf slicer, a la Sean Roberts, if you've ever seen him do that. And Martinez just looks at him and is laughing and shaking his finger. And Sakuraba's like, really? Nothing? Nothing? It's, it's By the way, it's it's a deep calf slicer. It's not a nice calf in. slicer. And it's one of the slicers that it doesn't as much slice the calf as it, like, opens the knee. Which, if you're going to do that to anyone, Richie Martinez is not a guy that's going to tap to, like, a knee separator. Yeah. So... Martinez was just on him, got around, and he darsed him. He sunk in that darse, and I was like... He tried to set up the twister at one point. Dude, I I was hoping they were all trying to go for it. But that wasn't the case. So he darses Sakuraba and uh, doesn't injure Sakuraba. So I was very happy to watch Sakuraba walk away without being significantly injured. I thought it was going to go after the knees, and I got scared for Sakuraba. Because his knees looked not only bandaged up, but also like taped up underneath. The dude's held together with duct tape at this point. Yep. Kinesio tape. Yeah. So Richie Martinez moves on versus uh, Hisam Rita. And Rita armbars him. Had no issue with it whatsoever. Just went in. Just like suns him too. Like gets on top, turns him over, puts his leg. Super Again, super flexible tall guy. Puts his leg over, gets the arm. Richie's are defending it, defending it, defending it. Rita just yanks it out, fully extends, and uh, Richie taps. Yeah. It was basically a textbook armbar transition setup and like straight up gi jujitsu. Yep. It was just like, holy shit, how fucking good is Rita? And then we found out how good Rita was uh, when he went against Gio Martinez in the next match. That scramble game. 10th Planet loves that scramble game. And Rita went in and looked like he had a guillotine. Rita's got to be a, a foot taller than Gio. At least six feet. Six Something feet like taller. That. Maybe. Six feet taller easily. Gio Martinez is three feet tall. Rita is nine feet tall. At least. So, <laughs> so he went for it, and they went through, and Martinez just popped up, snapped on a super tight guillotine, and rolled through and came on top, and I was like... Is he going to get it? Is he not? And, it and was then he the changed neck. the hand position of it. Because oh, he was yeah. basically, initially he snaps him down. He sna- Gio Martinez snaps Rita down with like a head, with an arm in guillotine almost. But he transitions the arm under the neck. And as they roll over, he reaches over top of the shoulder to connect his hands. So now he no longer has an arm in guillotine. He's just got a straight mounted like Marcelo guillotine. And the commentary was like, oh, shit, this is in. And I was watching it like, oh, shit, this is fucking in. There's no way you're going to get your head out at that position when he's on top of you and mounted in that position. And he didn't. And he taps. And Gio beats him. And I was, again, was this impressive. is the match that I was super impressed about Gio. Like, god damn, he is. That's why he goes to ADCC, ADCC every two years. Like, fuck, he's really good in Nogi. And this proved it. Because we've seen Rita just kind of pop through guys easily. And then Gio just subs him and. It wasn't even. It was a couple minutes. It was a four-minute match. Yeah. He subs him relatively like a, quick, like minute. halfway in or something like that. It like was quick. Minute. So Gio moves on versus Hideo Tokoro. They go to a draw. It was an interesting match. So right now, Team uh, Reebok is down to their fifth guy, Dong Sik Yoon, versus Amir Alam. Number mm. four on Team 10th Planet. So you still have Saknoff in the hole. And there was big discussion about how injured Alam was and what was going on. But he shows up. Not injured enough. He nope. shows up. You know, he's working him. Took him down. He eventually got around really quick to his back and hit him with that uh, Fedor. Fedor rear naked choke. Yep. And taps him out. Uh, so Team 10th Planet, your champion of Quintet 2. Did we discuss before that, well, at least I thought that they're going to run at least five of these 
and the first four champions of quintet are going to go Fuck against you, each I other said in that. five. That was what I, I postulated. That. No, go back and listen to the show. I that was will my guess. Not. And I was talking about would that be a problem because they've had some teams that have different people on them. So your winning team has also been present on other teams. So that could fuck that up. But those, I don't think anybody intersects with anybody. Not currently. Not but yet. they've had different teams where different guys go on from winning teams before. Well. Like, like Sakuraba was on the first, ha- no, sorry, Team Halio. Team Halio, but Team Halio didn't win. Team Polaris won that one. But I think we've seen people from Team Polaris featured again on other teams. So if those other teams win. True. But currently, between Quintet 1 and Quintet 2, there are no overlapping people. So right now, I can see it. I also think that the overall weight class for this was the same as Quintet 1, so I don't think there's a problem there. Nope. So I think they're going to do that, Josh. Uh, We have two more Quintets that have been announced. Uh, Quintet 3, which I think is in the United States, and Quintet 4, which is in the UK. They may have some other Quintet fight nights in between those, but I haven't seen those announced at this point in time. Huge fan of this event. It was a lot of fun. It's a relatively quick event to watch, too. It doesn't seem mm-hmm. to drag on. I like the rule set a lot. The You can only hold closed guard for 20 seconds. They, I forget who it was. Somebody had, like, a head and arm choke that wasn't going to get finished, and they held it, held it, held it, and then the referee went, nope, standing both up. Was gave that him, PJ Barch? I think it was Barch at the beginning of one of the first matches because he was, obviously, he was first, and he drew against both his opponents. Then they stood him up, and they were like, cool, penalty for both sides. Like, the guy in the bottom, not doing enough. Guy on the top, not doing enough. Penalties. I didn't agree with that. It's like, you're trying to choke him. I agree, but he wasn't progressing the position. He wasn't going to get the where, choke. Where do you progress from there? But the guy has the phone answered. He has his hand up. You can still finish from you there. You can, but he wasn't going to, and he hadn't Whatever. adjusted. And so it was a weird reset and penalty, and I didn't like it initially. And then once I thought about it a little more, I had less of a problem with it because I was like, look, he can hold that all day. The dude's not going to tap. Like, they were there. They were. He gave him enough time that if he was going to finish it, he was going to finish it, or he was going to adjust to do something. He wasn't finishing, and he wasn't adjusting. Penalty. I like it. Keeps the action going. It's a fun card to watch. It moves quickly. I think it was good. Yep, that's really it. Uh, go back and watch it if you haven't already. So on to the Brother 8-Man Jiu-Jitsu uh, event that happened. It was, yeah. it was a super fight tournament thingy. It was a bunch of matches that turned into a tournament. Sort of. I don't know. It was an 8-Man round Eight-man bracket. Yep, you can find it on Facebook under Jams Jams Partridge. His uh, Facebook page, it was at Brother Jiu-Jitsu. And I featured a bunch of guys that we've seen on Super Fight Scene pretty frequently, so we wanted to cover it. Yep, and so we are. Uh, Keith Krikorian was on it. Yes, he was. Jordan Peitzman, uh, organizer of Subspectrum. Also on it. So potentially in this bracket, we could have seen a matchup between Keith Krikorian, the champion of Subspectrum at 45 and 55, versus the promoter of Subspectrum. Uh, the promoter of Subspectrum. This promoter of Subspectrum. We didn't see that match, but no, it was fun not. to think about that. I was like, what if he beats him? We could have him on still. This was not long at all. It's literally like 45 minutes. No, it's, like, it's like 30 minutes. Oh, let me do some math really quick. And you're right. Okay. That's like so, the one I get, man. That's one. I get one per show or one per like month. Yeah. Okay. I was reading it backwards. I was like, bro, it's like this long. And he goes, no, that's out of 10 minutes. It's like how much away from 10 is that? I was like, oh. So the first Mitch is Mitch. The first, first match. match was uh, Keith for Corian versus Hunter Edwards. And the match is listed at 945 because Keith subbed Edwards in 15 seconds. With yeah. an arm bar. Arm bar. Quick the arm. match starts. Keith pulls, spins under, grabs the arm. Edwards lifts and then taps. Yep. Uh, let's see. Connor Diebler versus Santos Vargas. Santos Vargas wins by rear naked choke off of the Oma Plata in, you know, um, in about four minutes. It was relatively fast. It was pretty sweet. Uh, Troy Russell versus Mike Ashpole. Troy Russell won in about a minute and a half by arm bar. And then you had Elijah Carlton versus Jordan Peitzman. And Elijah won by triangle in about six minutes. That was like that was like the longest match mm-hmm. yep. of so, the whole thing. And it was running really quickly. Yeah, they didn't bullshit around. It was like match finishes, next match, next match, next match. It was good. It was the pacing of the event. Really was quick, good. it runs through. So we go into round two. You have Keith Krikorian versus Santos Vargas. And Keith won by... Arbar. Again? This one took a little bit longer, almost two minutes. 
And then you have uh, Troy Russell versus Elijah uh, Carlton. And Troy won by armbar in a little less than four minutes. So we're moving through. We are to the finals right now. Yeah. And again, it's something that you could literally watch on your lunch break from work. Technically, usually you're allowed 30 minutes. It's, I think, a 29-minute video total. So it's it's really easy to, to zip through. Uh, Keith Krikorian versus Troy Russell. Keith wins by Dars. Uh, that one took almost five minutes, but Keith is your champ. He, he's been looking good. He's brown belt now. He was on here. EBI as a purple belt and got through a black belt then. Like mm-hmm. He's been killing the sub only scene for basically since then. He won their qualifier like... Dude, he's looking good. I assume that we're going to continue to cover him and see him on more events. He's traveling around more. Good on him. Gets the victory. And again, if you're a smaller promotion and you have something that you want covered, and this isn't like, hey, here's this. Why don't you push it? We watch grappling. If you have something that's easily accessible not only to us but to everyone, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, John- I mean, we're going to be brutally honest. We're we're not going to be like, yeah, it was super awesome when it was a giant pile of shit. You know, you could tell this was something that they did. It was filmed on a phone. It was sideways for a little bit. It got blurry for a little bit. Uh, who was it that popped on? Uh, Derek Flag. Derek Flag popped in and was like, yo, tap your screen so it'll, un, you know, it'll, it'll unblur. And they did and it fixed it. Yeah. I mean, but again, some... This wasn't like we're gonna throw a ton of money into this and do all these and it it's high quality and it still looked terrible. But they still paid Keith. Like Keith they, won they, they and they paid, paid people. Him. They ran it. They're starting something up. You started from the ground and you build it up. All right, Drake, calm down. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. First of all, I will not quote Drake. I fucking hate Drake, man. So do I. You fucking wheelchair actor. We have many first, dis- I lo- there's a meme that when he first started rapping, it was um, it was last name <laughs> last name walking, first name never. Yeah, because he's from Degrassi. He's, he's a child actor from Canada that's had an agent forever. I was like, where the fuck was your bottom? Started from the bottom, now we're here. Like, y'all want to start? Started from the upper middle class, now we're here. A shalom to Drake. He's part of the tribe. So yeah, jump over there, Jam Partridges. Facebook page. It's a quick little video to watch. Enjoyable. Yeah. So on to the Spider BGJ Championships. This is the quarterfinal event. Yes, yes it for is. For Spider. It was, it was it was interesting, to say the least. Some upsets, Josh? Yes. So into the under 76 kilo bracket. Jonathan Alves, recently promoted brown belt. Defeated Jameel Hill by an advantage. The current world champion for Featherweight for IBJJF. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Dude Spider, always, dude, Spider always has these matches that you're like, oh, shit. Like, upset matches. Sp- I think Spider, uh, Royal, and there's one other organization we see the most upsets in. Here is... A case where you could say sandbagging. I would like, agree. Jonathan Alves has been talked about. I've 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 known about him for a while just through my friend Rick, who again is AOJ Black Belt, moved back out here. He's like, dude's dude's a monster. And just won purple belt worlds, recently promoted to brown belt. Here he is beating the black belt featherweight world champion and you know oh it's an advantage he still beat him you know that's impressive doesn't matter how you do it you still beat you still per the rule set beat the guy and oh it's a similar rule set to ibjjf it's not hugely divorced from that rule set very so damn masahiro iwasaki defeated hugo marquez two to nothing iwasaki hit a literal last second sweep a literal last second sweep to win this match finished it got the points time runs out yeah it was it was just a couple of seconds and it's like all right time and i was like oh holy crap let's plant it close to the chest on yep. that one yep 
In Sung Jung defeated AJ Agazarm. One add to nothing. Thanks, In Sung. Appreciate it. Don't have to deal with uh don't have to deal with AJ. You do not care for him, man. No, nope, not at all. Not at all. I'm a fan of his ability to get two points and ride it for the rest of the match. Well, he got no points and nothing and rode that the rest of the match. Paula Miao defeated Mateus Gabriel 8-2-6. It was very back and forth. And it's kind of sad that it was the biggest score of the match. 8-6 is a pretty high-scoring match, Josh. Yeah, everything else was like no points or advantages or 3 to nothing. Or just decision. Yeah, there was a, there was a little bit of that as well. You can say there that. There was one submission. Man, that's I that's the IBJJF one. rule. Okay, that is what happens when you throw together high level guys in the IBJJF rule system. Like the 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 rule system doesn't foster submissions. It doesn't foster action. It fosters really slow closed guard and pressure jujitsu. Not closed like, guard. I mean, just. I mean, you're telling me Paul Meow is, is playing. Okay, maybe not Paul Meow, but like in general, that's the kind of grappling that the IBJJF fosters and the rule set leads to. Like, it doesn't lead to high scoring matches. That's just not what it's designed to do. Is it sometimes kind of boring? I definitely agree with you. Should they change some rules to I think get get more action out of the matches? I think you should. But that's the rule set. The guys are playing to the rule set. If you can win with one advantage, if you can win with two points, that's what you're going to win with. You don't need to rack up 47 points to beat a guy. You need to rack up two. You need to rack up one advantage. One advantage. Literally an almost point. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the plus 76 kilo category. Kanan Duarte defeated Mateus Godoy. Three to nothing with a sick guard pass. And that's once he was passed, that was it. Mateus couldn't really do anything to stop. Man, he got three whole points, Josh. You're done. You're the champion now. Recently pointed to black belt. Done. Yeah. Vinicius Ferreira defeated Charles Negramonte by decision. The only submission of the night. Victor Hugo defeated Tommy Langacker via triangle. Langacker is silver medal at Worlds. Yep. Got triangled. Yep. TJ Jackson defeated Craig Jones by decision. It was in the gi, though. It was in the gi. This match was a mirror of their match that happened at BOA, but BOA has a negative point for pulling guard. Um, Spider does not. So it was a literal Craig pulls guard, and DJ attempts to pass the guard, and Craig attempts to take the back from the guard, and that was the entire match. And DJ Jackson gets a close decision win over Craig Jones in the gi. Uh, there was a Nogi match that saw Ben Henderson take on Eduardo Tellis. Tellis, you know, using his weird game to try to slow down Henderson, but Henderson used his wrestling base well and won two to nothing. So in November, the Spider BJJ Invitational semifinals will be the under 76 kilo Jonathan Alves versus Masahiro Iwasaki. And In Sung Jung versus Paula Miao. That's good. That's a, that's a pretty decent matchup. I don't know how I'm going to call the Alves versus Iwasaki match. Have they gone against each other before? I think it like... No. Really? No. Iwasaki is a black belt. Alves is a brown belt. Yeah. Recently promoted yep. brown Yeah, belt. you're right. You're right. Uh, Miao's going to beat In Sung Jung. Yes. I, I'm pretty confident in that. So he's going to go against either Alves or Iwasaki. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, we've seen Miao versus Iwasaki a couple times now. Uh, no. I think other is it other Miao? No. Iwasaki is a lightweight. Both of the Miao's are either featherweights or light featherweights. I'm thinking of um, Tomoyuki Hashimoto. My bad. There you go. In the plus 76, you have Kanan Duarte versus Vinicius Ferreira and Victor Hugo versus DJ Jackson. I'm going to say it's Kanan versus DJ. I would agree with that. I yeah. think, uh, who do you think takes it, Kanan or DJ? I don't know. It's, it's in the gi. It's in the gi. I don't know. I think Kanan takes it. We see, we've seen DJ move away from the gi recently. He's been doing way more no gi. We only see him in the gi on select things. on select occasions i think duarte we we see in the gi 
his team is more of a gi guy. I, I think Duarte takes just because he's spend more time. He spends more time in the gi recently. Period. Yeah. All right, that was Spider. Go back, check it out. Uh, if you need it in Portuguese, it's on YouTube. If you need it in Korean, it's on there. It was streamed on one of those pages. And if you want the American commentary, it's uh, it's on their Facebook page. And if you want the Korean commentary, it's on it's on Flow Grappling. Is it? Yep, it is. I found that out because I, I watched. I, I pulled it up. I was watching Fight to Win, and I was like, "I'm looking Spider again." And I pulled it up. I was like, "Oh shit, it's in Korean." Oh. Ooh, video quality is really high. And then I listened to about three minutes of Korean commentary and went, I'm going to mute this because I can't understand Korean. So that does it for Spider Championships. So on to our recap of the Nagoya Basho for Sumo. This Basho is now completed. All 15 days are done and we have some movement. Not we have no movement, but we, <laughs> we have, have some movement. <laughs> we have some guys that, well, some guys that did it poorly as per usual with Sumo. So again, uh, no Yokozunas. None whatsoever. None finished the Basho. Kakuryu went 3-3-9, three, three, and nine, going Kujo nine days. Hakaho went 3-1-11, going Kujo 11 days. And Kite, Kisei no Sato keeps the streak going at going Kujo the entire 15 days of the Basho. Yeah. Goedo. Uh, Go, Goedo and Takayasu. So I, I failed to mention that Takayasu was also uh, Karoban. He was uh, in... Jeopardy of losing his rank as well. That means if he gets under eight wins, he gets under a losing under a winning record mm-hmm. for the Debasho, he will be demoted from Ozeki back to either to some other position in the He'll move down the ranks. Yes. Essentially. They both held on. Goedo came through. His start was a little rough, but came through. Ten and five. Takiyasu looked shaky all the way through. Lost on the final day. Nine and six. Tochi Notion, who I wanted to come back, did not come back. Goes five, two, and eight. Yeah. Mitai Kumi. Mita Kayumi. I do it every time. Is it time. Kayumi? Say it one more time. Mita Kayumi. Mita Kayumi. There you go. Got it. He won the Basho. Seke Wake. 13 and two. He, he lost on the last day, but still looked great. Great performances. Looked great. All Basho. Uh, he won the Yusho, he won the Fighting Fighting Spirit Award, and... The Technique Award. Technique Award. Yeah. Impressive. Ichi Nojo gets his Kachikoshi on the very last day. Winning record, 8-7. and seven. Yep, he blasted Endo uh, to get that 8-7 and seven record. Kept it real close. Uh, somebody who's going to drop way down the ranks from Komasubi, Shohozan, 3-12. and 12. Not a great showing. Not this at all. Basho. He looked terrible. I think he's injured. I just didn't have a good Basho. Just didn't look good. Tamawashi also at Komasubi, 8-7. and seven. Koto Shigiku pulled out the last couple of days. He looked like crap. Takakesho. Well, he didn't pull out. He just looked like crap. No, he did pull out. See? Oh, looking Definitely. at the wrong guy. My yeah. bad. Yep. He looked like crap. Uh, three, eight, and four. Ikioi held on at Maigashira two, eight, and seven. Chiyuna Kuni pulled out. Takakesho again, ten and five. Looked great. Kaisei looked all right. Daishomaru, who had you know, being up high at Maigashira five, five and ten. Koku Taisei being that high at Maigashira eight, six and nine. Who was it that did? Oh, Yoshikaze did terrible at two and thirteen. Endo eight and seven. Yuta Kiyama also did great. He won one of the special prizes as well. He goes 12-3 and three this Basho. Really great showing for him at Magashira 9. Looked beast. Uh, Onosho at Magashira 11 looked good at 10-5. and five. Who else? Tochi Ozan was down there. Uh, Magashira 13, 10-5. Asano Yama also won one of the, the prizes, 11-4. and four. Definitely moving up this next Basho. Yeah, uh, may say he might get bounced back down. To Judio? Yeah, it's Magashira 16. Uh, Hokuto Fuji really coming back through. 11 and 4. Ryuden got that winning record. Okinomi got that winning record. It was, it, there was a lot of really good sumo this entire Basho. Check it out. YouTube. Shout out to Kintamayama who I watch all the time when stuff comes out. 
So, and there's also Jason's All Sumo. There's Nato Sumo, all sorts of stuff. Really good stuff to watch. Just pick any day and watch it. You'll see a little bit of the ceremonial stuff. You'll see the start off. You'll see the technique. It's not just two fat guys running into each other. There's a lot of technique, man. I know. You see some judo. You see like guys getting punched in, not punched in the face, open hand struck into the face, some forearms. It's yeah. a lot of fun. The more the more I've learned about sumo since doing this show and a little bit before, the more I've come to appreciate like, oh god damn, it's actually like there's a lot of there's a lot of fun stuff to pick up on and watch once you kind of get into a new sport. Mm-hmm. So that's been sumo for this week, the end of the Nagoya Basho, and look for sumo coming back in about two months. Two months. Dos. All right, does it. So on to Fight to Win 81 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This event paid at a total of $35,030 in salaries and commissions and was headlined by Gilbert Drino Burns versus Nick Calvinisi. You ready to get into them results? I am ready to get into these results, Josh. It was a blast going to this event live. Had a great time. Got to see some great matches. Got to talk to some great people. This event was sold out. I did not even expect to be able to watch this the night that it was going to happen. I was going to be at a concert. Uh, That concert got canceled because apparently rain decided to just drop on the East Coast and never leave. Dude, it was. we drove from Baltimore to Philly. It was a trope. There was points in the drive I almost had to pull over because you couldn't see more than like 10 feet in front of the car. It was so bad. On the way there and on the way back, it was just terrible. We left really early so we didn't have to deal with the rain and we checked into our hotel and everything. So I watched this partially in the hotel until the Wi-Fi in the hotel was not doing well because the rain. But, but all the videos are up on Flow Grappling. They are already up. And it's great. Again, the event was amazing live. The event was sold out. Uh, Philly gets live. And there were certain points of this match where it was like, God damn, it felt like, a, it felt like a really small venue. But there was definitely standing room only for a big like quarter of the venue. It was packed. Philly showed up to support Fight to Win Pro, and it made the event amazing. It's the 2300 Arena. Yeah. ECW Arena. Uh-huh. Did you go to the bathroom and see the big ECW thing in the bathroom? It's not there anymore. What do you mean it's not there anymore? It's not did there. Did they paint over it? Yep, I think they did. No. It, it was, wasn't there. It's just a bathroom. Not there. by the urinals. Oh, the other, on the so other side. A, yeah. Yeah. Nope. It's not. They covered it up? Yep, they covered it up. Oh, those fuckers. Yep. Because like, I was there uh, for a fight. Uh, CFFC uh, a year or two ago and it was there this time unless I just missed it. It was not there. It was just mm-hmm. a regular wall. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Purple's Belt results. Stanley Zagripski defeated Chris Thompson by decision. Natalie Boss defeated Jonna Woods. Jonah Woods? Jonah, Jonah Woods. Wood. Jonah Wood? Yep, Rachel's competed against her before. Ah. Um, I spoke to Natalie, she's defeated her by decision. Uh, these two women have competed against each other before. They were one and one against each other before. This was in the gi. Natalie gets it done via decision. She's actually moved down to this weight class. So, oh. exciting. Corey Nasworth defeated Will Schluchter by bow and arrow choke. Schluchter? Schluster? Schluchter. Vinny Aristoglio. Yeah, there we go. Defeats Zach Shimwa. And that was submission of the night for the Purple Belts. I didn't even get to get to that point yet. I just said de- defeated him. Josh, I got excited about Philly. It was a great It was a great evening of watching this event. Vinny won by Dars. Submission Jesus of the night. Christ. Did you get there before all the matches started? Uh, we missed the first match when we uh, got there. That we, was it? We, we, I got to watch the Boss and Wood match live, but we got there. Had the rain not boned us aggressively, we would have gotten there. We got there right as the walk out of the second match happened. So we were three to six minutes late. Basically. That's not bad. No. That's not bad. I was listening to Harry Potter on CD. That is a huge swerve from what we were talking about. But I'm just saying, I was sitting in a parking lot waiting to go in, uh, and it was raining and the doors weren't open yet. So we were listening to Harry Potter. Oh, so you found out the event was canceled? Uh, we kept checking Facebook, and they were like, wait 15 more minutes, and we'll let you know. Wait 15 more minutes, and we'll let you know. Finally, they were like, yeah, it's been postponed. I was like, oh, god damn it. Anyway, Lindsay Boston defeated Amy Gillen by armbar. Bill Conway defeated Jay Raddick by decision. Eric Naples defeated Kevin Dantzler by decision. And that was fight of the night for the Purple Belts. Nate Twer defeated Joe Barcelone. Bar- yeah, Barcelona. Yeah, by Dars. David Grossman defeated Rich Sains by decision. 
Teen results? Teen results. There was one team match on this card. It was a green belt match. Okay. Michael Gillian defeated Eric Frankovich by head and arm choke. On to the brown belt results. Jack Tankersley defeated Des McDonald by decision. Kyle Myers defeated Chris West by heel hook. Zach Green defeated Merlin Ramos. First of all, hats off to Merlin Ramos' parents for naming him Merlin. That shit is sick. You love that. Every time we see like a Merlin name, you always call it out. Yeah. Name's fucking Merlin. That's baller. It's pretty dope. One by decision. Ian Stark defeated Anthony uh, Passanelli by decision. Robbie De La Rionda defeated Justin Lesko by armbar. Peter Lingesso defeated Tim Rocco by split decision. And that was fight of the night for the brown belts. This is where I actually got back into my hotel and started watching. Bobby Alexander defeated Tiago Tomas by reverse triangle. And that was submission of the night for the brown belts. And he becomes the fight to win Masters brown belt middleweight champ. I thought time ran out. And so did commentary. And so did I at the Every, event. I, I thought it ran out. He hit him with a reverse triangle, and Tiago tapped literally at the last second. At the very last second. Yeah. I thought I was standing um, on the side of the stage, and I heard the bell, and I heard him get up, and then I see him put his hands up, and I was like, you are way confident about this decision. And uh, the announcer was like, oh, shit, he tapped him. I could, I just completely had missed that. It was, it was outstanding. It was sneaky. It was cool though. Denny Pressy Jr. Dennis, not Dennis. Denny. I'm sorry. Dennis Pressy Jr. defeated Jason Patton by decision to become the fight to win brown belt featherweight champion. So I got a chance to speak to uh, Dennis after this match. Apparently he had a back injury going into this match, and he hadn't been able to train like at all for the previous like month going into this match. Props to him. He gets slammed in this match too. Mm-hmm. Still able to pull it out. So props to him taking the uh, taking the title. It's the inaugural title. He uh, champion one forty five now. Yeah, impressive. I've rolled with Patton before too, at uh, up at Balance during their Philly roll. Uh, tough guy. I've been on a few other uh, cards with him as well, like the Good Fight submission only matches. And he was on like there that. too. Yeah, that's going way back, Josh. So moving on to the black belts, Daniel Tavares defeated Dom Hoskins, not Holskins. Yep, like I was, was right. I said I was like, you were I right. I think that's Dom Hoskins. Hey, I'm I'm not mad. Uh, by decision, Danielle Kelly blasts through Bruna Burns and wins by heel hook really quickly. She escaped an armbar mm-hmm. and slapped on a heel hook and called it a day. I yeah, mean, that was like a minute. I think about I think about about a minute into the match. Yeah, um, yeah. The Burns just had a rough night, aside from the main event. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> Look, you listen to this show. You've already you should have already watched the event. You know what we do on this show. We spoil matches. Anton Berzin, told you it was Anton. Yep, you're correct, Josh. Defeated Greg Soto by split decision. This was a very back and forth match. They were trading takedowns, trading positions. Good match to Even watch. though there were a lot of decisions on this card, a lot of these matches were it was very very well matched. Yes, and you didn't you didn't see a whole lot of guys that just stalled out. You saw a lot of guys working game working game, but even though they, they couldn't get a submission in the time frame, the matches the matchups were very very good. So props to Seth on being able to just do that. Roddy Bryson Bar- Barrett ugh, defeated Dan Jordan by head and arm choke. William Wolk defeated Herbert Burns by split decision. Really close match. Very close match. Uh, definitely, I think the correct decision happened, but it was an active match. It just was, Wolk just was able to do more. He had more legitimate submission attempts. Part of the fight to win rule set. Gets it done. Mm-hmm. Not Stone Cold Steve Austin. Every time you say it, man. Every I single time. I, I, I will continue to say it. Hella dreads. Yes. Super long dreads. Defeated Jimmy Morrison by decision. Dylan Royce defeated Bill Green by decision. Enrique Galarza. I'm just going with that. De- <laughs> defeats Michael DiPario by heel hook. 
Tim Carpenter defeats Kenneth Brown by decision. I'm wondering if this makes Ken come at the next match a little bit more aggressively. Yeah, Ken was on the Philly card and is on the Baltimore card as well. Um, I think this is his first loss in Fight to Win Pro. Fight to Win, not Fight to Win Pro anymore. I think this is his first loss that he's taken. I believe in, so. In the organization, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see uh, how he performs at the Baltimore card coming off this loss. Again, it's, it's a decision, but um, Tim's a, Tim Carpenter is a tough fucking dude. I know. He beat the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. You went against him, didn't you? I didn't go against him in a, in a jiu-jitsu match. Just in training, he just beat the shit out of me. It's great. Will Martinez defeated Thomas uh, Petrowski by straight armbar. I said that right. I'm impressed. Eric Johnson defeated Jay Cox by decision. Steven Plyer, Plyler defeated Kyle Braun via Plyer Driver. That was submission of the night for the black belts. It just looked like an off-to-the-side sort of guillotine from side control. Uh, again, another person that I've rolled with because, you know, balance. And, again, he beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he beat the shit out hey, of him. Hey, Josh, these guys are black belts that are on the this top of a card. This is when he was card. not black belt, but still. He black belt now on the top of a card. I assume he kind of beat the shit out of you. These guys yeah. really good, and that was evident he was watching really these tough. guys compete. This is a fun back-and-forth match. Um, a lot of really active pressure from Plyler. Yeah, from, Pl- from Plyler. Cool to see. Dave Sulkin defeated Jeff Nelson by choke. I couldn't tell exactly what kind of choke it was on the match. I was to the side. Seth announced it as choke. I couldn't see if it was head and arm. or I just couldn't tell exactly what kind of choke it was when it was finished. Late replacement Mike Padilla defeated Wilson Hayes by split decision. I spoke to Padilla after this match. Apparently he got the match on about a day and a half notice and was willing to step up and take it against Wilson Hayes. So props to him. That is, goddamn, that is stepping up to a challenge. Again, he's an EBI vet. We see, we see Padilla frequently on cards on the East Coast and all over the place, active super fight competitor. So, but still, to have him on a co-main event slot, step up on a day and a half notice, and put on the performance he did was impressive. You're not going to announce the following part, the part after split decision? Oh, not to mention that it was given fight of the year. It was pretty fast paced. It, it was, was a good. It was an amazing match. The 4300 Arena. Expo- 23. God damn, that's why I kept not able to find it on Google Maps. The 2300 <laughs> Arena exploded at various places during this match. Uh, it was a great match. If you're going to watch any match in this card, you should watch a bunch of them. Go back and watch this match. Mike Padilla at one point almost hits a fucking go-go plata, transitions over to get a go-go clinch, super tight. Wilson Hayes defends it, blocks the foot and the leg, and gets his hands out, and Padilla's super active with bringing the foot forward. This is a great match back and forth. Not to mention the match finishes with Wilson Hayes on top with a head and arm that he's driving into the mat for the last 35 seconds of the match. And about 15 seconds left, Padilla puts his finger up and waves it at the crowd like, nope, he's not. he doesn't have it. He's not going to get me. And uh, he takes the decision. This was an amazing match. Uh, again, deservedly, not your fight of the year, but deservedly fight of the night for the black belts. We still have part of the year. To go. You're not, you're not incorrect, Josh, but we should definitely put it on our list. Um, we do our recap match. for 2018 of best matches of the year. This is definitely going to be one, I believe, that will be on that list. Finally, the main event, Gilbert Dorino Burns defeated Nick Calvanis by decision. Again, super active match on the feet. Um, it, I love this. It was a super active match on the feet. But it wasn't a stalling match. It looked like a Greco match. For big stretches of the match, you had Duino going in, Calvinese going in. And I spoke to Calvinese after this match, and he was talking about um, the takedown he was trying to hit, going to a high crotch versus what he should have done and picked the leg. And he had, he was, I probably spoke to him 10 to 15 minutes after this match, you know, pretty shortly after. And he was talking about and talking with his team about, you know, what he would have done differently and how he would have done it, where he should have gone to. And it's really cool to see, you know, the high level guys after the match, talking with their team and going, yeah, this is what we're going to do. This is what we've changed differently to go and be successful in this in the future. And this was another great match. A lot of action on the feet, and it looked like a straight Greco match. You know, Burns with huge sprawls every time that Calvinese would try to shoot in, try to get the leg. It was a guillotine attempt. There were some turnovers. Again, another great match. Gilbert Dorino Burns gets the decision, and that was the final match of the evening for a fight to win. 81 in Philly. 
watch it. The submission percentage for this event 42%. So a little lower on the submission percentage. We usually read that at the front of the card, but I believe we forgot to do that this time. So Yes, you did. Yep. 14 matches uh, went to submission out of 34 matches. 33. 33. My bad. Again, great card. Go back and watch it. Huge payout. $35,000. $30 is a great payout. One of the higher ones we've seen this year. Mm-hmm. So always great to see that. Hopefully Baltimore can show up next week. This card got me super excited to cover the Baltimore card live this coming week. So let's get into that then. All right, let's get into it. So on to our preview of Fight to Win 82 in Baltimore, Maryland. This event is headlined by a man who was once very fat. Oh, sorry, not headlining, Josh? No, no, I'm not. Josh is on this card. I am on this card. A 190-pound brown belt gi match this time. Let's go to the the important matches first. All right, Josh, that's important to me, man. i got to sit next to you for one to five hours a week and do this show i have never sat next to you for five hours dude we've had some episodes that are like two and a half hours there's no way in hell those weren't five hour five hours of me sitting definitely next to you. not because i would have gotten a shitload of text messages from my wife like why the fuck are you still there like seriously what could be that important this show man <laughs> show is very important oh man so this event is main evented by a 205 pound black belt gi match tim spriggs versus matt layton Oh, this is going to be exciting. Yep, Tim Spriggs is the former champion for 205. Uh, at the last fight to win Maryland card, got defeated by Gutenberg Pereira. So this will be the first match I've seen him in uh, in a while in the gi that is not for a title. Uh, he just recently got beaten by Lovato as well in no gi for the title, I think. That was a couple months ago. Yeah. Because he beat... Uh... Oh, who did he beat? Who did he beat at 53 to take the title? Oh my Negramonte, uh, not Negramonte, um Leo Noguera. Noguera, thank you. Yeah, there we go. Remembering shit. Co-main event, brown belt, lightweight key title match, Josh Pike versus Aaron Brooks. That'll be interesting. Pikes was hype as hell on the last one. Oh, yeah. Followed uh, right below that, the female brown belt lightweight key title match, Vanessa Griffin versus Maggie Grindotti. We saw Vanessa on the last card. Mm-hmm. That looked very good. Mm-hmm. 220 pound black belt gi match. Kenneth Brown versus Wilfredo Moreno. 205 pound black belt gi match. Isaac July Jr. versus Carlos Eduardo Placido Lima. That was a mouthful. 200 pound black belt gi match brad pearson versus nick calvinese oh look who's showing back up yep we're gonna see him two weeks in a row how about that exciting good to see him 180 pound black belt gi match colin stewart versus mark vives we train with colin frequently Mm -hmm. and we see mark vives on these cards all the time from bonsai jiu-jitsu see him in the chicago cards and you know they, they fly him around they move him around pretty frequently on these cards he's headlined a few so it's actually interesting to see him you know at this location of the card which at least to me speaks on how how stacked the baltimore card is there's some really great matchups on this on this mm-hmm. event 165 pound black belt nogi match brett rainey versus javier cardozo 145 pound black belt nogi match Scott Dance versus William Wolk. Oh, hey, look who's who's back on the card again the following week. Well, look at that. Yeah, how about that? Uh, we're going to jump into this because I can take that. 190-pound brown belt gi match, Chad Malone versus Josh Weinstock. That's me. That is you. But you may, Man, you better make it at 190 this time. You're not going to get decued if you don't. No, I like, just have to pay him. Yeah, don't do that, man. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that, but I'm good. I'm on weight. Oh, yeah. Shout out Ellis Karadag. 145 brown belt key match. Good friend of ours versus Anthony Garavaglia. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I nailed that one. Ellis was on the last Baltimore card, so good to see him again. He was going against, uh, who was it? Malachi. Malachi Edmund. Was he really? Yeah. God damn. Yeah, Malachi's, Malachi's on the card as well. Yeah, second place this year at Brown Belt. He's uh, Malachi's yeah, versus fucking Jimmy Kennedy. Hochter. What? Didn't he lose at the, in Brown Belt to Kennedy? Yes, yes. To Cobrina's yes, yes. son? And then Cobrina's yes. son got promoted to Black Belt, and you're like, are yes. you really a Brown Belt when you did this? 
Mm-hmm. So we also got Chris Tran on the card as well. 130-pound brown belt gi match. Chris Tran versus Jared Bosk from Conquest. Again, two really strong brown belt competitors. Yeah. Also, uh, another one of our teammates, Greg Stotler versus John Johnson. That's a 225-pound purple belt gi match. So I think this is Greg's first uh, outing on Fight to Win. So Yeah. Uh, Greg is, uh, has been competing his entire life. He was a wrestler previously, yep. high level wrestler. Uh, you know, very aggressive guy. I, I let him know that, that you could slam. And he was like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, you can slam. So if somebody just like holds you in guard, you can slam them. And he goes, Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, so look for slams in that match. <laughs> he, uh, we were training and I had him in full guard and he picked me up and, and dropped me. Uh, not very hard. He was gentle. I appreciated that. Uh, also, another person from the last card that we saw, Alex Coleman, in a 165-pound female purple belt key match versus Kayla Dem. Yeah, she looked good last match, and she's been, you know, looking really good locally in the purple belts, at IBJJF, and other other events. Took uh, took third at Worlds. So I think she placed. Yeah, I believe third that's correct. Worlds, I could be I'm incorrect, mistaken. but yeah, she's again looked really good. A guy I've competed against before, Gannon Lang versus uh, Rico. Ooh, say that last name. Stanton. Stanton, a 145 pound purple belt gi match. I went went against Gannon at a 155 pound event, oh, and we so were both, both you were way up. undersized as shit for it. And then <laughs> it was fun. A, uh, let's see. We got uh, Tadaya Danafor on this card as well. We've yep. seen him. He was on the last Baltimore card. He's, you know, looked really good. He has, I think on the first Maryland card, 53, he had a quick flying triangle victory. So excited to see him. And then uh, Carlos Heredia from GF Team uh, in a 145-pound teen blue belt gi match. He comes in and trains mm-hmm. on Sundays with us. Got a nice bolo game. Yeah, tough, tough kid. Yep. Who else? I think Angelica Weish, the 125-pound teen blue belt gi match. I believe she comes in occasionally, too. Uh, I believe versus I think Megan, I've seen her. Uh, Serico? There yeah. is... Oh, wow, there's a... There is a lot of matches on this. I'm going to say like 35. I think there's 35 on this card. So Baltimore Sick. is fairly stacked. It's at a big arena. It's at the UMBC arena down in um, UMBC. Down in, in Our Baltimore. Our Kate Catonsville area. Baltimore? Baltimore. It's not really Baltimore. Yo, like it's in the <laughs> lower section of Baltimore. Everything is in Baltimore. You have to realize that. Anytime, if you if you say Maryland, people don't go like, oh yeah, Annapolis. Or, uh, Cockeysville. Or, you know... Cumberland, Frostburg, you know, California, Westminster, Westminster. I was know. almost born in California. I lived, in, I lived in California, Maryland for a while. Frederick, you know, it's all Baltimore. You, they're like, oh, uh, where are you from? Uh, this part of Maryland. Oh, so that's like r- right near Baltimore, right? You're like, mm-hmm. So if you talk about Maryland, most of the time you either hear about Baltimore, the city, or Ocean City. Yep. Pretty and, much, and that's really it. Like, Outer Banks occasionally, not Outer, not Outer Banks. Um, Outer Deep, Banks. Creek. Deep Creek, Deep Creek Lake. Yeah, yep. Those that's, are the three places, really. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of really cool stuff. Um, Baltimore likes to claim Edgar Allan Poe. He yep. really, he really just died here. That was that was about it. The Raven, though, Josh. The Raven. He just died here. He did. So we got Jim Henson from the Muppets. Oh yeah, he was the reason why the University of Maryland has a create your own uh create your own major major degree. Like you can just create it. You can build something and graduate from your own major. Thanks Jim Henson. Appreciate that. So, this card again looks amazing. The last card was amazing, the previous card was amazing, the Philly card was great. Uh Josh is going to be on this card. I'm going to be here covering the card. If you see us at the Maryland event, Say hi. I'm going to have a Grappling Rewind t-shirt on um, and probably have a notepad and be walking around looking like I'm supposed to be doing something. Yeah, probably. Uh, I, I'll i be the guy that somehow gained 30 pounds from the night before. You're walking around at like 215 at this event, aren't you? I'm going to be like 245. Not really. I'll probably be like maybe 200. Maybe. That's so. pushing it, though. So that does it for our preview of Fight to Win 82 in Baltimore, Maryland. Look out for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, if you like the show, please consider sharing it with people from your gym or people that you know that do jujitsu. Sharing the show is the best way that you can help us grow the show and 
Really, that's it. Thanks a lot for your time and your support. So on to our preview of the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam in Tokyo. And by preview, we mean we're talking about it. Yes. Because they are notoriously bad with releasing things. Yes. It is a major event for uh, for UAE, JJF, that is happening. It's going to be streamed on Flow Grappling. It is a major event. Usually they're fun to watch. There's usually some good matchups, some great results. Uh, some big players will usually come out to these events. Masahiro and, Iwasaki? Yep. Tomoyuki Hashimoto? Typically. A whole bunch of other guys that we do know about that I'm blanking on right now? Yep. Well, it's a Tokyo event, so we, we tend to get a lot more of the, the Asian scene that comes out to these that are sometimes on the Asian Opens and stuff like that, but the Grand Slam for UAE is... Typically, I think one of the bigger events we see the big. Asian grapplers showcased on. And so it's always fun to look at these guys, see who wins in the black belts and the brown belt divisions, because those are the guys that are typically we're going to see competing in other major events like the Euros or the Americans or the Worlds. And so this is a nice little preview to usually find those guys a couple months before the major events happen. So there's one more event happening this weekend that we want to touch on. The World Series of Grappling is happening on July 28th. It is a tournament that is supposedly going to pay out thirty set sorry three hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars in total prizes and has a fifty thousand dollars in prizes to the top performers for teams and academies. Uh, what I have to say about this is I don't know what the turnout's going to look like because. The one thing that you have to deal with is a $500 entry fee. That's a little steep, Josh. Fucking telling me. It's in five different locations, five cities. Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, New York, Florida. You pay to get in. They have two divisions. It's an over 180 and an under 180. Uh. (laughs) <laughs> oh, this is really cool. I just I just realized that. Uh, when you win first place, uh, this is in the brown and black belt payout, by the way. Uh, $20,000 to first place, and there's an asterisk. So I'm assuming, oh, for each weight class. So there's, yeah, $20,000 a pop. $20,000 for first. Second place gets five grand. Third place gets two. Fourth, 1,000. Sixth through tenth get $750 and then 11th place through 20th place get a free entry in the next WSG event so maybe this is what they're banking on to like get more people to show up is having 20 plus people show up and like hey the next one that you go to is free we paid $500 for this one I don't know it's it's an interesting series how it's going to work out uh, I'd love to see the turnout of it. and, and oh, look, I hope it does well. It's just $500 is a really steep entry fee for a tournament like this. Yeah, but we'll see the turnout. So it'll be interesting to hear about it, figure out who's won, who's moving on, who gets a lot of money, supposedly. Five grappling and gamblers just who is putting it on. Their tagline is where risk equals reward. You know, hopefully it turns out to be a great event. Yep. So that's it. That's this week in yep. grappling. And then next week's another marathon week with Fight to Win and all the other stuff we talked about. Yeah. It'll be interesting. You'll, I will still have the same tone whether I've won or lost. Maine like you did will, last time. Yeah. Maine will probably be like, so you won or, man, you're terrible. You lost. And I'll be like, yep. <laughs> and that'll really be it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go out and have a lot of fun, show some stuff that – uh, you wouldn't expect to see from me, and uh, yeah. Are right, you like gonna... teasing it, man? I'm, I'm exci- teasing you're like, it. I'm excited now. You're like, let's see some things you haven't seen from me before. Ooh, I'm a new I'm man. Be naked. I, I don't need to see that again, man. <laughs> uh, it'll be awesome. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's all I got, really. As always, I've been Maine. I'm occasionally Josh, and we are the Grappling Rewind. See you on the mats. As always, you can email us at thegrapplingrewind at gmail.com. You can check us out on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, and pretty much anywhere you can find Facebook podcasts. We're on Facebook, Grappling Rewind. Instagram. Grappling Rewind. Twitter. 
Grappling Rewind. Reach out to us on social media. If you got something that you want us to cover, you want to clarify, you know, we are here. You want to tell us we're idiots. Hey, let us know. You want us to pronounce your name correctly? Let us know. Subscribe. Subscribe on the YouTube page. Leave us a review. Helps us out a lot. It helps us out. And, you know, it eventually will help you out. We like to give back. We're doing this as something that isn't done. So help us help you. Again, as always, I'm Josh. I'm Maine. And this is the Grappling Rewind Podcast. We'll see you on the mats.